I cut off the directions here, but let me tell them to you. Um, we're told we're given a linear equation, right? Or we're told that we have linear relationships, and for each of these things, we need to write a different equation that matches the situation. In the first one, we're told the, the line passes through these two points, 0, 15, and 5, 3. Let's pick that apart. Well, if they tell us that one of the points is 0, 15, that's your y-intercept, right? If you think about the location of the point, when x is 0, right, the y-value will be the y-intercept. So remember, our slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b, a useful way of writing the equation for a line where m is your slope and y is your, uh, the b is your y-intercept value. So for this one, we already know that y equals something times x plus 15. Now we don't know the slope, we don't know right, x, but we can find it quickly. Slope is equal to your delta y or delta x. That, that means simply how much did your y value change in comparison to your x value change. Look at the points they give us. If we subtract the y values, right, we can find the height difference. From 15 to 3 is a change in 12. And then from 0 to 5 is a change right, in 5. Right? So here, though, if we, if we set this up correctly, one of these values would be negative. You might sense that because going from 15 to 3, we have to go down 12. So I'm going to think of it as negative 12 fifths. And I'll, I'll show you what this means in terms of a picture. But first, let's finish our equation. y is going to be equal to negative 12 fifths x plus 15. Now, in terms of a picture, right? It's interesting with slope because slope and fractions go nicely together. You don't have to think of this fraction as intimidating, right? And I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So when x is 0, y is 15. So we can go by 1s, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's 10, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then 15, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. So here's your y-intercept. Let me just change colors there. Okay, so here's the y-intercept. All right, well, what happens here when x is 1? What would the next point be? All right, 1 and 2 and 3 and so forth. Well, we don't have to figure them all out right now, but the idea is wonderful. It's just that the slope is negative 12 over 5. So that means when we go from the left to the right, as x increases by 5, when delta x equals 5, right, our y value goes down by 12. So that's not going to help us here to find 1, but it is going to help us graph the line, which is so nice, right? 4, 5. So here, my next point, with this slope, is going to be over here at, at the x, uh, x value is 5. It's going to go over 5 units to the right, but it's going to go down 12. It's going to go to the point 5, 3, right? It's this point right here. And we, we just, we knew that because, in fact, well, they told us that, right? But this also matches the idea of slope. Slope is saying that to get from one point to another, what is your change in y? So what's this vertical change right here? And then what's your change in x? What's this horizontal change right there? That's the ratio, delta y, or change in y, over delta x. Now, to do that, we can just subtract the values in our points. We never need to really draw this graph, but it is helpful. And if you think about this, how are we going to find a change in y? Well, you want to subtract, right? The height of 15, take the 3 away. It's almost like having a vertical line here, right? This is my 15 line to go up to the 15. If we take 3 away, we cut this piece out, what's left is this change in y right there. That's your delta y. The same thing happens here with your x. We subtract the x value. So as a formula, right, it's y2 minus y1. Now the point, we just think of this point here as x, x1, uh, x2, y2. We can switch that, but I'm, I'm going to set them at x2 and y2, and this will be x1 and y1. The little ones and that twos don't, they're not exponents, they're just placeholders. So, so we're subtracting the y values and then subtracting the x values. That's all we're doing. So in this case, what will we do? Will we do um, 15 y2 minus 3, 15 minus 3, over 0 minus 5, right? which is negative 5, so it's 12 over negative 5, which is equivalent to negative 12 over 5. This version of the slope is just saying start at a point, go 
up 12 on your y-axis, but then go down 12 on your x. So, you know, with slope, negative slope, if y is increasing, x is decreasing, and if x is increasing, y is decreasing, we can always reverse that. So that's some of the ideas behind this, and we can use that quickly to solve the next one, right? So here we're told two points that it passes through. I think we'll use a little bit of algebra here to solve. Okay, so let's find the slope. So m is going to be equal to what? Well, the difference in y or the difference in x, or change in y or change in x. So we're going to go 2 minus negative 4, that's your change in y, over negative 2 minus 5. And that equals 6 over what? Negative 7. That's our slope. Now we need to find an equation, right? We need to find uh, when this thing crosses the y-axis. Well, how can we do that? We can set up a table, we can set up a graph, but can we solve it algebraically? It's kind of fun. Let's do that. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, y is equal to our slope. Let me see that is again. Our slope is 6 over negative 7. Okay x plus b, and b is the unknown. Like I said before, we, you know, uh, or maybe I said in a different video, I don't know, I've lost track, but these, these points, we can plug them right into the equation. So I'm going to plug in negative 2, 2. And I, I chose that point uh, strategically, I guess, because here we have an x and a y value, and x equals negative 2. So I know by pl well, plugging that in, that will give me a positive value. So anyway, this, this point is on the line, which means it's a potential so it is a solution for this equation. This equation has infinite solutions, infinite points that work. Here's one of them. So we plug it in and y equals, oops, sorry. We know what y is. In this, in this case, y is 2. And x is going to be equal to negative 2. Plus, now b is the unknown, but we can solve for an unknown, right? So here, this is equal to 12 sevenths plus our unknown equals 2. So then b is going to be equal to 2 minus 12 sevenths, right? I just subtract 12 sevenths from both sides there. Now 2 is 14 sevenths minus 12 sevenths. What does that equal? Well, that equals 2 over 7. So now we have our equation, right? y is equal to, all right, negative 6 over 7. Same thing as 6 over negative 7, x minus 12 sevenths. And we're done with that one. Parallel to the line with this equation and passing through 3, 0. Well, here's the thing about parallel. If you have two lines that never meet, their slopes are equal, right? Their angle, sometimes, sometimes students refer to the slope as like the angle around, a, based on a point and then the axis. If you think about it that way, the angles are exactly the same. They'll never meet. So if they give you this other equation, they're giving you the slope of a parallel line. They're also giving you the slope of this line. So m is 2, right? They have the same slope. And here they give you the x-intercept 3, 0, not the y-intercept. But that's still going to help us. So let's just maybe clear some of this off. This is from our first problem. We don't need that anymore. All right, so, so our slope, we know, our slope equals negative 2. And we have a point. So we have an x. When x is 3, y is equal to 0. We can solve this algebraically. y equals negative 2x plus b. Plug in the points. Well, x is 3, negative 2 times 3, plus something needs to give us a y value of 0. So it's negative 6 plus b, this is a b value, equals, six, equals 0. Well, that means b is 6, right? Because 6 plus negative 6 is 0. And that's our, our answer. Unfortunately, my b's look like 6 here, but put this together, and y equals negative 2x plus 6. So there we use some algebra to solve as well. All right, hope this helped.